My name is Luda Ludwig, and I uh, was a master's student in the biology and wildlife department. And you're here at AGU presenting about your research into what happens to permafrost after wildfires. Yeah. Uh, in 2015, we went to the Yukon Kuskokum Delta and studied the effects of that fire. And what were the effects? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked a little bit about it before. So some yeah. of the effects that you described to me um, was that the wildfire burned through this area that mostly has lichen, that is the, the right. vegetation that's it's on there? It's a subarctic tundra that's dominated by lichen by biomass um, uh, in uh, peat plateaus that have really deep organic layers um, and active layers of about 60 centimeters. And after the fire, the active layers got deeper and we saw a lot of subsidence and a lot of thaw of the near-surface permafrost, exposing um, deeper soils that used to be permafrost and are now um, thawing in the summer and actively respiring carbon as methane and carbon dioxide. So it's sort of a climate change means there's more wildfires all over the world. Yep. And so wildfires Particularly like Particularly in high latitudes. Like Alaska. And so but the, and what the thing we talked about was after this fire, more carbon has come to the surface. Yeah, uh, the fire exposed deeper soil horizons that used to be frozen, and now they're not, and they happen to have more carbon and more ice in them. Uh, so there's uh, soil profiles that are now thawed that have um, more dense carbon, and these are respiring in the summer and producing a lot more carbon dioxide and methane. Uh, I have a question. Someone posted a question on Twitter. Um, as a permafrost um, researcher and someone who is investigating effects of climate change, how do you react when people say climate change isn't real? Uh, well, I'd like them to come to my poster and then maybe we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. Um, so tundra, I walked on tundra. It's sort of soft, but not wet and squishy. It's just sort of soft like walking on a mat. Uh, well, that probably depends on whether or not it rained recently. It can be very wet and squishy. Um, so as after the fire, you mentioned it was more of a bog than it was uh, uh, like a pillow. Right. Yeah, um, that's because um, it, uh, the fire thawed uh, some of the surface permafrost that had really high ice content. So when that ice um, melts, it um, has higher volume as ice than it does as water. So we get collapse under that ground and then um, water pools into those places. So um, basically the micro topography increases and we have um, places that are more wetlandy where maybe it used to be a little bit more of a um, flat plateau beforehand. That's a pretty big change for tundra, where there's usually no water for birds to come by and do their thing. Yeah, well, this is a delta area um, to begin with, so there's a lot of lakes, and um, it's not uh, as close to the coast where there's um, definitely a lot more research in um, the um, birds. Are, are a lot areas. of people doing? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt yeah. you. Um, are a lot of people doing the research that you did that you're presenting here at AGU today? Uh, there's a team of eight of us that are on this project and several others are also presenting on it um, from different perspectives in the carbon cycle. Um, I'm presenting work from the soil and the permafrost, but earlier today there was a talk on um, the aquatic side of things and looking at um, methane and carbon dioxide that's coming out of ponds and streams and lakes and tracking those changes as they move through the watershed. So it is the magic word interdisciplinary. Yep. Yeah. Um, I've got just a couple more questions. Um, why are you studying at UAF? What is one of the benefits of being working and living and studying at the University of Alaska Fairbanks for your work? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think being living in a place that's also the ecosystem that you work in, you get to learn a little bit more about your environment in ways that you um, don't expect and might not consciously be aware of while they're happening. And there's something. Um, is there something nice about that as opposed to being um, a scientist who comes and goes from the ecosystem that they're studying? Um, and on top of that, it makes things logistically a little bit easier.